Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to hang a door, so stay tuned and check it out. Alright, so the first thing to do is assemble the door jam. Now your door jams might already be assembled and mine may have been as well, but I had them stain and pre-finish them before they sent them to me. So that's why they came knocked down like this. It's really straightforward though, just put a little bit of glue here and dry some brad nails in. Let me show you. So just a little bit of glue here and then push them together. Make sure they're tight and I'm driving inch and a quarter brad nails into it. Just like that. So one thing to kind of check for is that your door jams are flush. Um, in this case, I've got a little bit of drywall that's kind of sitting proud of this door jam right here, the rough opening. So I'm just gonna trim that back flush. All right, so we're down here on the bottom. I'm starting on the hinge side right here. Um, that way I can get this as plumb and straight as possible and then work my way around the rest of the frame. So I picked up a couple um, shims like this. You'll notice that they're in this wedge shape. Um, best practice, instead of just uh, inserting shims from one side, um, since it's in that wedge shape, if you just do it from the one side, it's actually going to um, kind of tweak the frame uh, either in or out like that and you're not going to end up with a, a square and straight frame. So instead, best practice is to insert a wedge from each side. That way, no matter how far in you have to push them, um, you're always going to get this uh, flat surface right here and your frame is going to be nice and square. So really, just to start, take a, a shim from each side and throw it in there. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that uh, this front edge is pretty flush with both sides. So this edge is, is flush with this wall. Same thing on the back side. This edge is flush with the wall on this side. And your walls aren't going to be perfect. They'll, they'll be pretty close, but they're not going to be perfect. That's where the level comes into play. So we'll put a level on there and we'll get that nice and plumb. So right about there is plumb and I'm just going to drive one in right now. And then I can come from this edge and see how close we are. All right, so that's going to work out nicely. So I'll just drive a few more right in here. All right, and there we go. Um, you can cut these off as you go or you can save it to the end. To trim these back, just take a sharp blade like this, give it a couple of swipes, and then break it that way. And there you go. Sometimes you, you'll have enough left over uh, from the cutoff that you can use these again. But if not, I think a pack like this is like a buck and a half or two bucks, so they're not that expensive. So then, uh, that's pretty much the process, right? So we're gonna insert a couple shims in. We're gonna just ensure that the frame is nice and plumb, both on this edge and on this edge as we move up and just kind of repeat that process. All right, so basically on this first side, on the hinge side, I like to start by putting shims behind each of the spots where the hinges are gonna be. So we got another hinge right here. So I'll start there. Just get those tucked in. And we can start pulling this door frame either in or out. I know that it's got to come out a little bit more this way. So we'll just push those shims in a little bit more towards each other. That looks pretty good right there. We'll check this front edge again. That is looking right on. So we can drive a couple more bright nails in here. Looking good, we'll move on to the next one. All right, so up at this top one, same process. Throw some shims back there. I think in this case it has to, the frame has to go towards the rough opening. Right about like that, actually. 
that's looking pretty good. Again, we'll check this front edge. That's looking good. And then drive a couple brad nails in. So now we're looking straight at it here. We can see we got our sim down here and one up here. And you can see if you press on that, it's a little bit flimsy. So then once I have the shims behind where the hinges are gonna be, I like to come back and split that difference between them. So I'll do another one here, just to take out some of that um, flimsiness. And then the same thing uh, between the middle and the bottom hinge. And these, I mean, I always like to double check that it's still nice and plumb. Um, but basically, you already have that set and then you're just putting in these to take out some of that slack here. So when you push these in, just push them until um, basically friction will hold them in place. Again, you can always double check though. That's looking spot on. All right, there we go. So we got the hinge side all installed. It's nice and plumb and straight. Now we can move on to this other side. So as we move to this other side and secure this in place, uh, it's pretty much gonna be the same process. There's only one more thing I'd like to kind of double check along the way, and that is this dimension right here. So from this inside corner to this inside corner, I wanna make sure that I'm maintaining that same dimension all the way down. So I know that this is 36 inches. So I wanna make sure that this whole frame is 36 inches wide all the way down. So that along with also making sure that it's nice and plumb and square. All right, so like I said, I wanna maintain that 36 inch dimension uh, between the frame all the way up. So we'll start down here at the bottom and just make sure that this is starting at 36 inches. Let's put our tape in place like that. And it looks like right now I'm at 36 and 3 eighths of an inch. So this frame has to come in three eighths of an inch to right there. All right, and then I wanna make sure that it's flush with uh, the wall right here. Another thing, you can take a shim, uh, these are pretty straight like that, and just make sure you can kind of flush it up like that. Um, really any straight edge will do the same thing. So we got that, we got our 36, inches right there and then I can throw a couple shims in down at the bottom here all right just like that still got our 36 inches bring you over here all right so you can see we're right on 36 inches down here we got our shims in place and now we just drive in a couple brad nails All right, so same thing. I'll just work my way up the frame like this, uh, constantly checking for plumb and checking that it's nice and level and also checking that 36 inch dimension. All right, so for the top, I'm just gonna fill up some of that space with some three quarter inch plywood. So I cut a couple scrap pieces to fit in there and then I can fill the remaining space with a couple shims. The important part here is to make sure that this middle isn't sagging down. So whatever that dimension is, I can take a measurement from these outside and just make sure that right in the middle, it's that same dimension. So it looks like I'm right at 79 inches. Yep, same thing. So then as long as I got 79 inches right in the middle, I should be good. And it looks like I do. You can also double check that with a level. All right, then just attach the hinges to the frame. I've got my clutch set to six.
Then I could cut the top doorstop to length and nail it in place. So here's the box of hardware. So we got our door handles. We've got this guy. Got some screws. We've got this guy. And I'll also need this. So if your door is routered out for this shape right here, this plate, um, you can go ahead and just install this as is. Uh, in my case, my door is not, so I'm gonna have to pop this off and then put this in its place. So for that, just find something like this and pop that off like that. Just like that. Then you're able to turn this piece and slide it off there. Now just put this guy on here like that and there you go. So we can install this plate right here just like that. All right and then this piece will go in here like this so that this tapered edge is going towards the frame I guess. You can kind of push it in there and then take a scrap piece of wood and push this down and then just hit it a little bit with a hammer. Then just take your handles like this and just come right apart and feed them in there. One on one side, one on the other, just like that. And then drive in, then just drive in the screws. truth. Sweet. Seems like it works pretty well. So one thing I like to do to kind of quiet the door when you close it is add some of these little stick-on felt pieces. So I just do three, one at the top, bottom, and then somewhere in the middle. Now it's time to move on to the door trim. So I like to start with the top piece here. So what I've done is I've cut a 45 degree angle on this side, and now I'm just measuring from uh, this short end right here over 36 and a half inches. So in my case, I have a 36 inch door, so I like to add a half an inch to that. So that gives me the 36 and a half inches. And again, that's on the short side. So I'm just gonna flip my saw over this way. There we go. Now let's go install this. All right, so in my case, I'm just going to put this piece all the way up to the underside of the soffit right here, and then just make sure that it's spaced evenly on both sides. And then just drive it home with a couple brand nails. Then I can measure for the two side pieces. So just gonna put the tape on the floor and measure up to this corner right here. So it looks like it's 79 and a quarter. Let's see if that's the same on this side. Should be pretty close. Yeah, it looks like it's 79 and 3 sixteenths, so a sixteenth of an inch difference. And a tip to help hide that fresh cut edge, just take a matching marker and color it a bit. This will help hide the raw edge just in case you don't get the cut perfect. Then it's just as easy as putting the trim in place and driving in some nails. And finally, the last thing to do is fill in all the nail holes with some wood putty. If you guys enjoyed this video, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button down below. That just lets YouTube know that this was a decent video and that maybe it should share it with some other people to watch. And if you haven't already, consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well, only if I've earned it. That way you're notified every time I release a new video. And until next time, thanks for watching.